The most perfect name. I mean, you know, Peter Parker, stuff like that. But when you read Yoshiki, you know you're in for something, right? Perfect. <laughs> Is there anything we have to show on the screen? I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are. I did want to ask, though, about exclusive music for the show, for the comic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you are using some of my compositions. Yeah, actually, actually, all my compositions. Oh, you well, haven't animated anything yet. I haven't, no. <laughs> but we're going to do the comic book first. Yes. yes. And you're hearing it first here. And what are we going to call the comic book? The Blood Red Dragon? Oh, yeah. Yes. And will oh, the yeah. name Yoshiki be larger than Stan Lee? <laughs> we're going to have a problem. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that right big. away, there's a problem. <laughs> okay, you're the so biggest. on the stage. We appreciate you coming out to the Kamikaze. We've got Mr. Stanley will be appearing in a few short minutes, but as you might imagine, is a 93-year-old gentleman. When I leave that other hall and walk here and he leaves, I beat him every time, right? He, mo he moves a little bit slower than I do, so he'll be here. But here's what we do have in between waiting for Stan Lee. We do have my second favorite Lee of all time, Mr. Jim Lee, who did some Wildcats for Image. Big shot now over at DC Comic Books doing some Batman, Superman stuff. And when he was much younger, he was rocking it on the Punisher and the X-Men. So let's hear it for Mr. Jim Lee. Yeah! All right, when Jim comes up here, or, or Stan comes up here, we'll be there. He'll, he'll be up here. So here's, here's what we're going to do here. We're gonna, Jim and I are going to have a conversation amongst ourselves. And, and we're going to chit-chat back and forth. Uh, if you guys have a question, we can get it. I think we're waiting for a stand. But the question is, at some point, we were... Jim and I have been around now longer than we like, we like to admit. But we were, young, we were young little kids too collecting comic books, right? And we got introduced to both superheroes and Archie comic books, and the horror stuff, but somewhere along the line we made our decisions on what we were going. So the question I give to, to Jim, because I don't even know what the answer is, <laughs> is, is how did you how did you sort of get introduced to both Marvel and DC Comics? I mean, I know my story, I don't know what your story yeah, is. Yeah, no. um, it was actually, uh, you know, I moved to the United States when I was five years old, didn't speak any English. So I really read comic books as a way of learning English. You could read the stories without even reading the dialogue, right? If you had really good artists, the storyteller could kind of navigate you through that story. And I started learning the, what the white dialogue balloons did and then the yellow captions. And so it really kind of helped me learn English. And I was just always into cartoons and animation, but comic books for me was it. And uh, that was the only place you could find this kind of excitement and adventure. Uh, there were no movies, there's no internet, so comics were it. And uh, I just always loved drawing. And then it wasn't until, uh, certainly for Stan, I went to, uh, they had these things called libraries back in the day. Uh, the places you go and you get like free books. And uh, they had one, uh, it was like, uh, what was it, The Origin of Marvel Comics, right? And it, do you guys, are you familiar with that book? Yes. No, okay. <laughs> you have the right panel? All right, so Marvel Comics. It was like this. Look, they're only they're only 15 years old. You're oh, you're right. Back. So anyway, it's a it was a typewriter. It's a device back then where you hit keys and it threw letters on a piece of paper. And there was these hands typing, and it was these virile hands with like manly man hair on them. And out of the typewriter came all you know the Hulk and the the Thing and, and Iron Man and all these great Marvel characters. And that was my first introduction to Marvel characters. And and but but more importantly. I was wondering, who are these hands? Who, who, who do these hands belong to? And it, it dawned upon me that there was actually a human being that actually created these stories and actually wrote them out. And that was my first introduction to Stan. So at that point, I knew who Stan was, and I would read the comics. I love the art, but if Stan wrote it, it meant something extra special. I knew that it was coming from a very manly, virile kind of point of view, I guess. So, so let me ask, were you as confused as I was? That when you when you're collecting all those comic books at the beginning, his name was on every yes, single one of them. Yeah, that's the thing. You go to one, one dude presents. doing all those comic books, right? right. How did you get any sleep? He was on every single so, comic every book. Single combo. So that that was the trick, right? It's like, oh, Stan did this. Stanley presents, and so as a very young kid, uh, yeah, I was buying them all pretty regularly, and 
But you know that that was it. And then also there were other books like there were Batman and Superman like hardcover collections that had stories from the, the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Modern Age. And I would just basically I want to have a conversation out here, right? Is that what we're doing?